Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Welcome back to The Art of Photography. Last week we started talking about tethered shooting using a piece of software called Sofort Build. And today we're going to talk some more about Sofort Build and how that can be extended to do time-lapse photography. So let's go on over to the computer here and I'll show you what we got going on. What I want to show you now is when you're going to do a time-lapse. Now time-lapse basically what you're doing is you're taking a large chunk of time. We're going to end up making a movie when all's said and done. And so maybe it's a sunset or maybe it's the sun moving across the sky. Maybe it's the moon at night. Something like that that has motion to it but you don't see with our perception of time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe take four hours of, of time and condense it down to 30 seconds or one minute or something like that. And so you're seeing everything move really fast. Um, that's essentially what you're doing with the time lapse. Well, Sofort Build or, or a lot of software that, that kind of does this kind of time lapse thing, uh, I recommend this because it's free. Um, but anyway, uh, you Look at the buttons up here at the top. I'm going to show you how to get to this. This first button over here we talked about last time. That's the shutter fire. Okay. Then you have a timer. So this will give me five seconds before the shutter fires. I have bracketing, which we will discuss in a later podcast if you're not sure about your dynamic range. And then finally, here's the interval shooting here, right here. Sofort Build has a great interval meter uh, built in. So if I click this, brings me up a little menu and it warns me you know you want to make sure your mode is set to manual and all that and disable autofocus because your film you don't want it to autofocus or auto expose anything because we want if for instance if I'm taking uh, uh, footage of the sun going down I want to see the sun going down I don't want it to auto expose and just make it look like the lights getting weird and the sun went out um, I want it to get dark at the end so I'm going to pick one exposure I'm going to use that throughout the entire shot okay and what it's going to say is how often do you want to take the picture okay well this you can set this pretty high I can say one picture every 24 hours if you're doing like a year condensed down in your time lapse. Maybe that's cool. I'm going to take a shot at 2 o'clock every day. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to do something much more macro here. Um, I'm going to leave all these set to zero except the seconds. We would go up to, let, let's say, 5. Okay, So let's say OK to that. And what you're going to see is interval shooting in progress. It waits 5 seconds. And I don't know if you can hear this. Okay, the, the camera just went off. I don't have it mic'd up. But it's going to take an image every five seconds until I tell it to stop. Okay, just took another one. Now, my light isn't moving very fast right now. Um, actually, the sun will start going down soon, and it will start changing outside. And remember, the light changes slowly, so you're probably not going to see that big of a difference in your exposures right here. But remember, you're trying to fill time. Okay, so don't let that, that deter you. Um, you're going to have to be patient. Make a cup of coffee. Sit there. Hang out with the computer. Now, this is not a real time lapse here. I'm just simulating it. So let's go ahead and say stop. Uh, one other thing that's really important to note here uh, when you're setting up Sofort Build, and I know I'm out of the order here, uh, but if we go up to the Sofort Build menu at the top of the screen, and I'm going to select Preferences. Two things you want to, uh, want to make sure you have set here is where you're saving the captured pictures to. Well, I have a folder set on my desktop called Time Lapse. If I want to change that, I need to say Other and select a folder. The other thing you want to do is look at the file name where it says DSC. I can change this to whatever I want if I want to name it what the shoot is, like Sunset, for instance. And then the four format here. Okay, what it's doing is name, which is what you put in this DSC column here. And then it is followed by an underscore and then these four zeros. Okay, what this is going to do is it's going to sequence the images. Okay, because we're going to use QuickTime to put this together in a second. It's going to need to see image one, image two, image three, and it does that by file name. Okay, and then the .ext is the extension. So if you're shooting RAW, this will be an NEF file or a TIFF file, depending on what kind of camera you have, or um, a JPEG. Now, I don't see any reason to really shoot RAW on this. It's going to use a lot of power and a lot of processing power that I don't need because we're going to be shrinking the video anyway even with this being a six megapixel camera um, it's still a lot of data to cram into a video so I'm going to go ahead and leave this set to um, uh, ext I'm going to use JPEGs for for my my, uh, my stuff so anyway, we can close this now like every good cooking show I have some pre-baked footage that I shot last week outside and let's go ahead and quit Sofort Bill for a minute I'm going to open the QuickTime player here and this is downloadable for Windows as well if you go to Apple's website. I'm going to go into the file menu here. And what we're going to do is I could say new player, etc. Or I can open a file. I don't want to open a file. If I open a file, it's going to open one image. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say open image sequence. Okay, and I'm going to navigate on my desktop in a folder called podcast here. I'm going to select the first image. Okay, you can see this is indeed the sunset I filmed the other night. Okay, and notice the images here. DSC is the name. I, mean, I could have changed that to something else. And notice the sequence. Here's 41, 42, 43, 44. So Sofort Build made all this and it put them in the right order by using the names, the naming conventions. If I skip way down, there's about 500 images in this folder. You can see that 
indeed what my scene changed there. Um, I will be honest with you, this was one of the first time lapses I had done, so my footage tends to be a little short. I need to shoot more often to get uh, that hour to get enough footage out of the end. But anyway, what I'm going to do is select the first image in that sequence and say open. And what it's going to do now is it's going to say, here's some settings. What do you want your frame rate to be in your movie? Now this, I have lots of options in here. I can make it look like a slideshow and say, hey, five seconds per frame. And that's more like a slideshow. It's going to be a drag in this application. What I'm going to do here is show you a couple things. Um, if you're going to be doing professional video, uh, in the United States, 24 frames per second is what uh, films are usually shot at. 30 frames a second, more or less, is what uh, video and television run at, okay? Um, or 60 if you really want to cram it down. Um, your computer will be able to support a lot of these. Um, technically, if you're doing film, 23.976 is the exact frame rate you're going to be using, and 29.97 is the standard for video. Um, if you're in Europe or England, 25 frames a second is the PA PAL standard. So that's what you would select there. I'm going to go ahead and select 23.976. Let's say OK. And you can change this if your footage is too jerky or too slow. Now you can see already, and I have a pretty fast computer, this is a 17 inch monitor on a laptop here, and this already six, six megapixels, you can see it was huge, it's bigger than the screen. So this is way bigger than HD video here. So you're getting a good resolution is my point here. You can go to the view menu or hit command zero and bring that down to the screen size and let's go ahead and size this in a little more. Now, unless you have a ragingly fast computer, you're going to have some trouble playing this video as it is right now. Okay? The reason is, is because each frame is fully rendered as a 6 megapixel JPEG. So this is really going to be taxing on your computer's processor. So what I would recommend is let's export this first. Now, if you're doing this for professional video, you probably know all this stuff already, but you would use the export um, option out of the file menu and you would go select a name and choose a compressor codec, things like that. If you're not doing pro video, if you're not going out to Final Cut Pro or Premiere or something like that, you just want to make a quick video to share with your friends, what I would do is go down to File and select Export for Web. And what it's going to do is say, you know, what's the name, where do you want to put it, desktop, and what is the version going to be played on? Is it uh, on an iPhone or a desktop? What kind of connection? That kind of thing. And so I can create a poster image, which basically is the icon of the movie, things like that, the first frame that comes up when somebody's loading it. Now, again, um, in cooking show fashion here, I've already made these. So let's go ahead and let's look at one. And uh, let's bring up, uh, let's see, I think the sunset was the first one I did. I'm going to go ahead and open this in quick time. And here we go. Now, this is compressed. This is ready for the web if I want to put it there. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see that, in fact, I do have footage of a sunset, which is pretty cool. Um, I just used one exposure, so you can see that each of these gets dark as it goes down. These were actually all shot on the same day in varying light conditions. Um, and it was shot about over an hour period of time. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to show you, like, you know, we'll look back and reflect here. Some of the problems that I had, this was the start of another one, um, is that uh, I didn't have enough footage. You can see that each one of these clips goes by pretty quick. I'll play it for you again. So you can see that I actually wanted a longer sunset here because it's really, the light is doing some cool things in the clouds. So I probably should have shot more photos. I think these were going at you know, one picture every 10 seconds, okay? Which wasn't enough, all right? Um, the other thing that I did do here, let me stop this for a second and show you. I used a really long shutter speed on these and let me show you why. There's two things that are moving in this image. You can see this little airplane, and you see it's a long streak. So this was like a one second shutter speed. And then there's a highway back here, and you can't tell from the still so much. But I really wanted those lights to blur. They may have blurred a little too much. But you, allowing the images to blur, okay, uh, I'm in focus with the, with the lens, but I'm using my blur with motion using the longer shutter speed. This will give you a little more realism when you're in your final shot. Because video actually blurs out because it has some sets of parameters that are much like still photography. But if, you know, if, I, if I click and drag to scrub this, you can see that the blurring does indicate more motion. There's this planes going through the sky there. They're in reverse. So anyway, so this was kind of a first try. It was a, a nice sunset, and so I went ahead and shot it. Here's some traffic. Um, you can see the highway back there. And again, it is blurring. That's what I wanted. Okay. So that's uh, it's one of my films here. Uh, let's look at another one here. This was, uh, this was my second go at it. And again, I didn't have enough footage. This one's a less, slightly larger render. Anyway, let's go ahead and play this. You can see that I, I took several angles. But again, this was a little bit earlier, about 7 at night, getting into the fall. It's about when the sun goes down here. Let's go ahead and, uh, and play this. And you can see this is a little jerkier than I wanted it to. So again, what it's doing is it's spacing those frames out too much. Okay. Uh, but if you're getting a jerky motion like this, what I would do is um, shoot more frames 
in a shorter period of time. So I think my intervals here were probably one shot every five seconds. I would probably do one every two seconds. And you're going to use a lot of shots, and so you want to make sure that you got enough battery in your camera, and this was actually a battery in a laptop when I was using this outdoors. Uh, you also don't want to do this in the rain if you're using a laptop, obviously. Um, but anyway, that's more or less uh, how you're going to get it. Let's go ahead and play this so you can see what it looks like. But you're going to get this really nice motion in the clouds, stuff like that. A little bit of light flickering because I think I was adjusting my exposure, which is a no-no. Okay, now here's what's kind of cool before I get to this shot. Uh, notice the sun is down here. So like if I had just shot this as a picture, it would have been way underexposed. There's too much darkness in here. I only get barely any clouds, but I get this at night. And you can see this is actually the state fair going on in the background here, which happens every fall. But what's cool is though, when you watch this in sequence, is that the sun is going down. So I want it to be dark at the end. I want the end of this sequence to actually be dark. So here we go. Now we're into darkness, okay? And the last sequence here is kind of cool too. This was a storm cloud that was moving through with a lot of lightning in it. Okay, let me show you the other kind of side effect you're going to have to all this is not only getting some cool time lapse footage, and this is by no means there are people that do this much better than I do. I'm just showing you how to do it, which is really cool. But one thing I noticed on this is let's go back here before it gets too grainy. Is you can you end up getting shots, and these were just these were not taken intentionally. But here's a really neat one with the lightning hitting the ground. But I was just simply taking interval timed photos. Okay, so it's taking a photo every five seconds, and there was a lot of lightning going on in the storm, and I was sitting there kind of watching it. I didn't want to mess it up and try to get the photo because I wanted my frame rate to be smoother. And so, uh, but you end up even if you're not going to make a movie time lapse, you end up with some shots you may not have gotten otherwise, which is which is kind of cool. But anyway, that's really all there is to time lapse photography. I've just done this in quick time. I can save this out from here. Uh, you can scrub through it, you can put this online, share it with your friends, all that kind of stuff. But that's, uh, that's one thing that Sofort Build does really well is this interval shooting um, concept. And uh, anyway, so try it out, see what you, see what you get. And um, anyway, some, definitely some fun stuff. So anyway, once again, this has been The Art of Photography. Thanks for watching.